So we have uh, Felipe who's going to give us a talk about uh, revamping uh, the container systems e driver. He works for a small blue website, which some of you may be using. Um, but Felipe, I think you're a brand new star there. So uh, why don't you take it away? Thanks. Um, hi all. I'm Felipe. I'm part of the Facebook delegation. <laughs> Tell you a little bit about me. Uh, so I work for Facebook. And I care a lot about C Group 2 and about containers. I've actually been with Facebook uh, recently. I started working in June, so very recently. Previously, I was working on Kubernetes. I was working at Google, actually. And I was working on Kubelet and focusing on C Group 2. And I've been a systemd contributor since uh, 2014. So what's, what's this, this talk about? So um, this is about containers in the Docker Kubernetes world. I mean, there's kind of like different approaches for containers. There's systemd and spawn, there's LXC, and there's Docker's Kubernetes. And this is about that world. It's about C group 2 as well. And it's about systemd. So uh, a little bit about the state of the C group world. Um, so these days, systemd can be considered as, as the main user space API to C groups. I mean, you can definitely like, talk directly to the, to the kernel, like through the C group 3. But systemd is trying to expose this in a nice to use interface through dbus or through, through units. And uh, there are kind of three ish uh, modes for the C group hierarchy. So there is the legacy mode, which is C group only. Um, there, then there's the hybrid mode, which uh, um, already mounts the C group 2, 3, but doesn't really use it for any of the controllers. And then there's the unified uh, mode, uh, which is um, C group 2 only. There's kind of like with the hybrid, you can actually move some of the controllers uh, into the C group 2, 3, like enable them in the C group 2, 3, but that's not something anyone is, is doing anyways. Um, hybrid is where like most people are right now, because um, like since uh, System D versions of like two or three years ago, it's been fairly stable. Uh, but that means like people are still using C group one. And uh, unified is where we would like to be with the controllers uh, using C group two. So, motivations for, for why we want uh, C group two. And uh, so, like uh, the hierarchy is, is better, is sane. Delegation works better. There's new controls, like Dan was talking a, a little about like a memory that low. That's something uh, fairly new to 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 C group two. Also, IO dot wait is coming to C group two as well. So C group two has is is already like there is a lot of improvements that are coming to C group two only. Uh, all this eBPF goodness is coming to C group two as well. So Alban talked about um, trace loop earlier this morning. That's C group two. Um, my colleague Tuli is coming to talk about BPF more later, and all this is connected to C Group 2. Uh, Fedora 31 is going to be using the unified hierarchy by default. So that's a strong motivation to. <laughs> it's all dance. And uh, we would like to have, like, drive up the adoption by other distros as well. And uh, C Group 2 also improves support for nested containers. Like a lot of this work we've been talking about, like with uh, rootless and demonless, like C Group 2 makes a lot of that uh, easier as well. So those are the motivations to, to have better integration between lib container, well, to, to better support for C Group 2 in lib container. I uh, give a small uh, explanation of where the components are. Many of you might be uh, familiar with that. But uh, there's like uh, quite quite some container managers uh, these days, like for instance, like Podman, Docker, Cryo, and ContainerD. So Podman and Docker are, are mainly like user uh, containers, so like user container managers. So like you run your own containers there, uh, while uh, Cryo and ContainerD are are backends, like our servers or our demos that are serving like Kubernetes. And uh, yeah, Kubelet uh, talks to either Cryo or, or ContainerD through the, through the CRI protocol. And uh, all of those uh, actually use RunC to execute, uh, to actually run the containers. And uh, RunC uses libcontainer. Actually, like, both components are, are like same, uh, same project, same, same source tree. 
And uh, which of those components support uh, the unified hierarchy, support cgroupGen natively? And only one of them does, like presently, which is Podman. And it does it mainly because it uses CRUN, which is like a re-implementation of the RunC kind of CLI. Uh, and uh, has has fixes to 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 work with uh, Cgroup2. Uh, so does that mean that um, that we could simply uh, have the others use CRUN and that would solve our problem? In in fact, it doesn't because uh, everything else in fact depends on like links to libcontainer uses libcontainer. So just changing the runtime is not enough. So digging a, lit, a little into libcontainer. So libcontainer uh, has uh, several components to kind of create abstractions on uh, Linux's, uh, uh, Linux's uh, like features for containers. So like versus like namespaces and capabilities are other things that uh, libcontainer abstracts, and C groups are one of them. And so like we're looking at the C group part of libcontainer. And it supports two separate drivers. One of them is cgroupfs, which uh, essentially writes directly to the, uh, to the cgroup3, like sysfs cgroup file system. And the other one is systemd that uh, uses the bus calls to, um, to talk to systemd. And uh, so the, the main, uh, if, if the systemd driver was always going to systemd, this wouldn't be a problem because systemd uh, the bus interface abstracts whether you're running unified or hybrid or legacy and exposes like a, like a consistent API. But uh, the systemd C group driver of libcontainer actually uses systemd for some operations and then goes around it to, to change uh, limits and, and settings in C group 3 as well. So a uh, first attempt in uh, first attempt in in, uh, in uh, revamping the, this libcontainer systemd driver was was uh, rewriting large parts of the systemd C group driver to actually go through systemd uh, all the time through the bus through the bus and not really write directly to the C group three anymore. And um, I actually opened a, a, a PR for that, but uh, this attempt actually failed. And uh, it failed, but like was useful to to learn something from it. Um, so one part is like touching this 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 legacy code that's been around is uh, is is hard. There are problems there. Uh, one thing is like compatibility with versions of systemd. So like the, the reason why this this libs, lib, lib container driver uh, is writing directly to the C group, C group three is that when it was written, systemd was not uh, supporting many of the of the limits it's setting. And uh, so like this first attempt was fine if I run it against systemd two four one or two four two or like two four three for sure. But uh, not really if I go back to like a uh, system D from say like uh, something widely used like Ubuntu 18.04 or even like RHEL 7 with uh, system D v219. So that's definitely an issue that uh, needs, needs a fix here. And uh, the other part is uh, features that uh, were missing from either system D or the kernel. And one example is uh, freezing legacy like group. That uh, that was only was only made available recently on on, on the kernel on, on C group two implementation in the kernel. So that was another part. I mean, there were some attempts to work around it, but in in the end, it's like a, a limitation there. So um, the the new proposal is to to split um, this um, this uh, system the uh, instead of instead of like. Um, but if, instead of let's say replacing, like rewriting the code of the, the systemd driver, is actually splitting into two separate uh, uh, implementations. One for the legacy hierarchy that's going to cover basically like legacy or hybrids, but basically it's going to be C group v1 mostly, and it's actually the current code. And the second one that's going to handle the unified case. And the, the one with the unified case is going to be able to go through systemd. Um, essentially all the time. So yeah, a separate uh, unified interface. And uh, the, um, 
The advantage of, uh, of uh, this approach is that we can enable the new implementation only when we, we figure out that we're running on, uh, on a unified uh, uh, tree. And so we don't need to worry about compatibility with other OSs like CentOS 7, RHEL 7, Ubuntu 18, or even 16, or so on. So, um, so uh, one of the issues I mentioned is the um, for compatibility of the DBus API. Uh, so uh, this is something that uh, should be solved in systemd to to allow for this kind of implementation. For for this, this is like a general issue with. Uh, Client, um, clients of systemd for, for this group API. So like right now, if, you're, if you make a systemd unit and you write specific options, if systemd doesn't recognize some options, uh, it's, it's gonna simply ignore those. And that's by design and that's fine because like if you're using limits that only a newer version of systemd uh, is gonna recognize and you run it on an older version of systemd, that unit is still gonna work and it's gonna simply uh, ignore those, those directives it doesn't know. But that's not the case with the Dbus interface. So when I'm creating a unit with a Dbus interface and I ask it to do like, um, like um, let's say IO wait, which is like something that's new that's coming with, uh, is not even like in the latest um, system D, uh, and it doesn't recognize it simply like that Dbus uh, call is gonna fail. So um, this needs to be fixed in system D and probably through a Dbus protocol that can take optional uh, directives and, uh, and probably report back on the ones that weren't available in that version of systemd. Uh, missing features in systemd and kernel is something that uh, has been worked on and like for instance like free support was, uh, was something that was mentioned previously and that's actually available like cgroup.freeze is available on, on cgroup2.3 in kernel 5.2. So um, that combined with the, the need for um, need for like a, a Dbus API to do com like backwards compi for compatibility and backward compatibility of, of uh, directives uh, means like we probably need a fairly uh, recent um, a, fair, a fairly recent stack of kernel plus systemd to to make this work. Uh, the good news is that, like, we seem to be right on time uh, for um, for distros to actually start switching to running uh, unified hierarchy. So we can assume that most of those features are going to be in place when they switch to unified hierarchy. So we can solve this problem in a way that um, all the components are uh, deployed already together and everything works. So the envisioned future is one where the driver detection based on unified or legacy hierarchy uh, is, is made by the by libcontainer and can switch to unified to, to, to using a system D implementation um, uh, based on mounting the unified hierarchy. And it's gonna be fully function functioning starting on specific versions of uh, system D and, and kernel. Kernel 5.2 looks like it has like most of the uh, features needed, and uh, perhaps the next version of systemd could have everything that we need for that as well. And hopefully that helps uh, driving up uh, adoption of unified hierarchy by other distributions other than Fedora. And I wanted to do a call to, to Giuseppe from Red Hat who has been working on this problem. Like his focus is slightly different than this one. He's been working on re-implementing the, um, the access to DC group three um, on libcontainer, and uh, he has one PR merged, and uh, so like he already split the legacy and unified driver, and uh, he partly fixes the problem. He doesn't fix the problem for Run C, but fixes the problem for the other users of the library like uh, Kubelet and uh, Cryo, and still writing to this group three directly. And uh, he doesn't really implement some of the controllers, uh, like uh, for instance, like the device controller in C group two, like the the system the implementations based on eBPF. So that would require like writing eBPF into libcontainer, and that's one of the reasons not to do that. I mean, to go through system D because you don't need to re-implement that. One uh, alternative or additional approach to consider is uh, using system D's recommendation for delegation, so that. Um, instead of simply creating new C groups uh, under the root of the tree, it would um, uh, essentially use the uh, recommended approaches like um, 
Leonard Ward this, uh, wrote this, this document like a while ago with recommendations of like how you could just simply, uh, well, you can just use systemd natively so you get slice units and scope units, but you can also like simply uh, have your service delegate and then um, uh, create a year three under your service or create a new scope uh, with delegation and then create your own tree. So that would mean that like container manager manages that whole uh, unit and from system D point of view, it's um, a single C group essentially. Uh, there are drawbacks from, from that approach, uh, which means like uh, seeing this as a single thing means like uh, whenever um, it needs to take action on that uh, unit, it's gonna see all the containers running on the machine as, as a single unit. And uh, one uh, item for future work is uh, evaluating like the um, C group two um, controllers and the OCI. OCI is the standard um, uh, like image uh, format for for Docker containers and and Kubernetes containers. And uh, so uh, the OCI specifies like well, there's there's the image itself, um, and there's also um, like um, which constraints you use, which, which limits you set, and so on. And it turns out the OCI attributes for, for resource control are very uh, tied to the C group one model, uh, which has been changed a lot in C group two. And C group two is still evolving. Like we were talking earlier about um, the new controls that are coming. So, uh, so this probably can take some work in, in uh, looking at newer controls, perhaps higher level controls instead of very low level ones, and um, abil like uh, ability to do extensions as well. And uh, yeah, that was it. Thank you. Hi. So I've been reading those pull requests for a while, and I've got the impression that Run C is slowly moving to become a wrapper on top of System D. Is my impression correct? I think um, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think uh, there's there's the interest of uh, supporting the case of um, of like not running on system D anyways. Uh, like many use cases are uh, like for instance like nested containers where you don't necessarily have like a system D PID one in the first container. So you want to support the the use case of um, uh, yeah the use case of um, of being able to write directly to a delegated C group three. Uh, also, like I mentioned, like uh, libcontainer doesn't do only C groups. This is actually like a very small part of what um, what uh, libcontainer does, and it only like it only needs to interact with system D for for those particular cases of uh, managing C group three. Like namespaces is something you do on the on your process capabilities is also something you can set and and set. So in that sense, uh, yeah, I'm sure if that answers it. Hi. Um, regarding the uh, the fact that OCI embeds uh, basically how Secret V1 was designed uh, into into the API, yeah. I wonder whether or not this also affects uh, System D. I, I know obviously Dbus is yeah. extensible, but uh, how is that problem being dealt with uh, for the DB, for the Dbus API? Sure. Yeah. So there were some cases where yeah, some 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 um, some limits were met. I think in a way. Um, Looking at the history of System D, what happened is, uh, like C Group Two and and System D, like System D support System D support for resource control, were developed pretty much in parallel, so that uh, System D at some point even like stopped trying to expose some of the C Group One APIs, waiting for the C Group Two API to happen. There 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 have been some cases where like uh, like. Um, um, some some directives were mapped, like memory limit mapped, mapped to memory max, 
since the name on C group two is memory memory dot max, and it's like there there's some semantics don't match exactly, but uh, they're they're close enough in some cases. Uh, yeah, so um, in that sense, I think um, systemd bypassed this problem s somehow, like uh, for the most part, by at some point planning to implement C group two mostly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the Kubernetes community was somewhat mm. hostile to the changing to C groups v2 um, yes, for a while. Have um... sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, uh, yeah. When we were trying to move to C groups v2, the Kubernetes community was probably the, uh, and specifically Google. And, um, Thank you. <laughs> was uh, hostile to changing um, to C groups v2 because they thought C groups v1 yeah. was good enough. Um, have you seen that attitude change? I think. You know, yeah. I, I, I was sad so. to see you leave Google yeah. to go to Facebook. I think. No. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, essentially, what happened is like a question of prioritization, right? It, it wasn't the top priority, and uh, now when people are thinking, especially at things like uh, eBPF and how much stuff is coming on eBPF, and it's like you see people talking about eBPF all the time. And that's the, the thing that I think is, is changing a lot of the attitude towards uh, C group 2 because like we want eBPF, so like let's take C group 2 for that reason. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, enhancements on C group 2. And uh, yeah, actually tomorrow, like um, we'll have uh, Anita and Daniel talking about UMD. And Johannes talking about Senpai. So, like, there's a lot of stuff that's being developed on C group 2. Like, uh, yeah, like um, people saw the potential in C group 2 and invested there. So, while uh, C group 1 was clearly like got to the limits, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. hi. Yeah. Um, speaking about that, too, um, weren't those C group, uh, I mean, BPF features also enabled by choosing a hybrid approach. Uh, why, yeah, why was the hybrid approach not pursued more? Um, yeah. yeah. There, there are actually limits to, I mean, you can get some BPF uh, features, like you can run some BPF traces on the, on the hybrid approach, but it's fairly limited what, what, what you can do. Like if you actually unlock the, the unified C group three with the controllers, like the, the information you get is much, much richer. So I mean, to, to, a limited, to a limited extent, yeah, you can get some of the, some of the, uh, the eBPF uh, features on, on C group, um, on, on the unified approach, but uh, you get much better integration in C group two, yes. Just to mention that regarding the hybrid approach, like in retrospect, I think it was a mistake. We have added that to system D. Like it's a stopgap that has no future, and we should not have done that. So yeah, forget okay. about the hybrid mode. It's just, I mean, if you waste your resources in that, then yeah, you waste them for nothing. So. It's where we are today, and yeah. But, so yeah. I'm sorry for <laughs> much that. <laughs> it's okay. I can come here and give a talk about it. Uh, I was just kind of curious in in some of the stuff like even what you mentioned with C run, yes. Is, uh, if if that was, I know that a lot of people are using lib container in places, but it's it's been kind of curious, and I'm not just boasting it because sure. Giuseppe works for Red Hat, but we're getting contributions from it from interesting places because it now supports this stuff natively and it runs lighter and like MIPS and all this other kind of stuff. It's sure. have, it, was it even much of a consideration there to just do that or I, I'm sorry, I don't to use C run to use C run instead of lib container or what? Sorry, to use C run instead of lib container? No. I, oh, because, you because mean? You, oh, yeah. Okay. To use C run instead of lib container or instead of run C and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean C run. Um, so some of the immediate problem of like unblocking part of this because C run, uh, I mean it's a whole implementation and has been done with a lot of C group two directly, but uh, the fact is uh, C run is like a standalone container runner while lib container is a library that's actually used by most of the other components, right? So um, yeah, that's that's. Uh, that's that's uh, why just switching to C run doesn't work for 
the general case. I mean, it would work for cryo, like just not using libcontainer and using C1, but Kubelet is also using libcontainer to create its slices and right. So. Yeah, uh, on the topic of mistakes we should never have made, uh, I think uh, uh, telling people they should use libcontainer or, or even suggesting that this was a good idea was, was a mistake in retrospect, I think, especially since the libcontainer API makes mm -hmm. absolutely no sense. And so it, 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 this, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a bit late to say this now, but uh, uh, it, would, it would have been nice to convince people uh, four or five years ago to not do this. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, we're stuck with it, unfortunately. But I, but I do think that we should, even if we do get secret video stuff in libcontainer, we should still convince people people to stop touching it uh, directly, at least until we redesign it or something. All right. One last question. Um, so a question on that specific slides. Uh, most yeah. of it is red, and that's kind of like blocking, let's say, wide adoption of C-group V2 everywhere. Yes. Um, do you have more or less a gut estimation of like a rough timeline of when that is going to get like greener, at least like reaching yes. the top levels of greens? So actually, um, uh, I mentioned uh, Giuseppe's uh, PR, which actually uh, was created and merged after the slide. So like that actually unblocks uh, a lot of uh, this stuff. And I'm fairly sure it unblocks the, the kubelet uh, connection. So kubelet and libcontainer can, can use cgroup2 already. And I assume cry you as well. Then, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that, that unblocks it, uh, like most of it, yeah. All right, thank you, Felipe. Thank you.